Incoming transmission. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the final day of the GSL Codas for season one of 2024. We're going to be going through the round of four and then immediately into the finals. We'll be crowning a GSL Codas champion by the end of tonight. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. A guaranteed TVP finals for the first time in a really long time as we've had some surprising results over the yeah. course of this GSL Code S season. Stats is back. He looks stronger than ever. He looks like he's pre-military form. Stats. Maru chasing yet another GSL trophy. And then we have Kira and Hero, who are just consistently the top two Terran and the top two Protoss in Korea. It's a really stacked top four. Going to be a great day. It's It's been kind of wild not having a Zerg here. Um, Zerg has been consistently dominant. Uh, in GSL, in, in tournaments abroad, all over the world. Uh, and then, of course, we've had Maru, who's had a ton of success in GSL, winning seven so far, uh, a record that really hasn't, you know, no one's gotten close to it. Um, but, yeah, for this uh, Final Four, not a Zerg in sight, which is extremely extremely rare, and we're going to have a TVP Finals no matter what. Yeah, Dark was knocked out in the round of 16. He's usually a perpetual candidate to make it to the Finals of any code as he enters. Shin was the only one in top eight, and he got eliminated there in the round of eight as well. As we look here at the championship prediction, 27% of fans going for Hero, 51% for Maru. Now, yeah. that's not... Normally, I would say that's a surprise, but... I feel like it should have even been higher for Maru, to be totally honest. Maybe. Here in stats at 11% and 12%. To be honest, I'm most excited about stats in this group. I feel like just seeing the way he's playing is so impressive. I didn't know if we were ever going to go back to... Uh, a macro, slow, conservative Protoss. It, it was really only him and Rain that were doing that, and that was like six or seven years ago. And, um, you know, when those guys faded away for a little bit, it was really down to just dicey, aggressive um, control play for Protosses. So the fact that he's back and he looks even better than he did before is very cool. So who knows? He might take the whole thing. Guys, we are crowdfunding the prize pool here at GSL if you want to contribute. Get some cool perks, such as you know replays, behind the scenes videos, interviews with the players. I think they even show like cute little pictures of your favorite pro players you can download and put on your wall. Go ahead and donate some star balloons on Africa TV or go to the Patreon. I, I think it's patreon.com slash GSL. I don't think there's anything tricky with that. Go ahead and contribute to whatever tier you feel, com feel comfortable with. We appreciate the support, guys. Yeah. This is the way GSL will be going forward here. As you can see, we've already raised a lot uh, for Season 1 and Season 2 here, whether that was through the Patreon or through the Star Balloons on Afrika TV. Mm -hmm. um, All so that goes to the prize pool, too. I mean, there's a little cut that Patreon takes, but besides that, everything going directly to funding your favorite pro players. Help them keep StarCraft alive. And, I mean, $60,000 already. Yeah, the last GSL. That's, that's very a lot. cool. Very cool. In a second here, we're going to be going to an interview with our two players uh, who will be playing a best of five. One of them will be going on into the finals. And, um, you know, it, it's funny. It's very, as far as prep goes, very even for each uh, player. They have to come in here knowing one mirror matchup and then knowing the, the uh, whatever the uh, opponent's race is going to be. So, no matter what, you're either going to have to know TVT and then TVP or know PVP and then PVT. Yeah, and so it might be a little bit tricky for these guys coming into the finals because you know it's going to be a PVT matchup no matter what, but how much of your prep time do you point 
just preparing for the semifinal match to even get there? How much do you stake, like, what, 30%, 40% of your practice time in case you make it to the finals so you can beat Maru, so you can beat Cure, or so you can beat one of the Protoss players coming from the upper bracket? It's going to be two best of fives, Hero versus Stats first, and then Cure versus Maru, and then, of course, we'll be rounding out the finals tonight. And let's hear what our first two players have to say. So hello, hello, guys. First of all, stats. You are a former GSL champion. You made it back to the semifinals. Your play has been spectacular so far. How are you feeling right now? Well, my opponent, Hero, is one of the best Protoss players in the world. He's really strong. So I'm a bit intimidated, but... I'm going to try and give my best performance today so I can beat him. Well, Stats, it seems like you're kind of getting back to your old school form. We're getting glimmers of the prime Stats back in GSL today. What do you have to say about that? Well, I do feel like I'm playing well, but at the same time, I mean, my opponent here, Hero, he is very unpredictable. He can come out with all different kinds of attacks, so... Even though I'm the Shield of Ire, I'm going to have to keep my guard up this entire time, all the way through to the end. I mean, I am good at defense, but Hero is one of the best aggressive Protoss players in the world. His aggression is something else. So, Hero, I mean, you're laughing as stats replies. When you're looking at your head-to-head -head record here against Stats, in terms of confidence, you're feeling pretty good, right? Hero says, yeah, I'm feeling good, you know, if I play Stats on the ladder. I mean, he is kind of like a monster, even though head-to-head, -head, I'm feeling confident. So did you hear what Stats said during the interview about your play? I think they're talking about the behind-the-scenes interviews, potentially. And Hero says, well, you know, I heard that he said he learned a lot from me <laughs> back, when I, back when I was helping him prepare for this GSL. But, you know, I'm an aggressive Protoss. He's the defensive Protoss. Well, Hero... You said before in an interview that you wanted to face against Shin here in the semifinals. Instead, you're going up against Stats in a PvP. How do you feel? Hero says, well, you know, it's a PvP semifinal, so... The most important thing is just the absolute basic ability. It's going to come down to mechanics and build orders. Well, you've played a lot of matches against Stats recently. How do we evaluate his form? Well, I think strategy-wise, Stats has been pretty good so far. They're asking him to expand upon that a little bit. And well, Stats is saying, well, you know, Hero is giving me a pretty big compliment here. I can't really believe what Hero's saying, but I'm happy that he's complimenting me here on the stage. Yeah, I used to win a lot of games against Hero before I went to military service. I think these days, though, Hero is even stronger than he was before we went into the military service, so I'm feeling a little bit nervous about his current form right now. And as I said before, I have to keep my guard up. So before we start this semifinal match, any words? <laughs> And Hero says, well, <laughs> hope, you, ho hope you hold your shield really well here, Stats. Is. I think we're all kind of expecting Hero to be the one on the aggressive side of things and Stats to try and defend and parry his attacks. But yeah. we'll actually have to see how this one goes. Well, you know, I, I want to point this out. I think that PvP, you have to approach it fundamentally a little bit differently than uh, you do in PvT or oh, PvZ. Yeah. So, you know, although we call Stats the shield of IR and he is a very defensive Protoss. I don't necessarily think that he has to do that here. 
he could do some pretty decisive builds. He could end up being the aggressor as well. So this should be a fun match. I think it's going to be really hard to predict um, how each game is going to open up. But um, this is going to be, I think, one of the funnest mirror matchups we could ask for. Yeah, and the fact that these are two players, one known for their very aggressive style and one known for their very defensive style, is going to be a lot of fun to see them clash head to head. And even though it's only a best of five, it's not a best of seven, I'm right there with you. I think if Stats wants to come through and win this one, he can't just be trying to defend. He can't give yeah. full security to Hero, where Hero is just trying to belt him with attack after attack. Well, and Stats isn't really getting into counter punches. I feel like he has to come through with at least some aggression over the course of this series. I think if, if, if in this matchup, if Stats is just defending, he's so much more likely to lose because yeah. of the way PvP is. I think a lot of the PvP is sort of hinged on either trying to circumvent what your opponent's doing or blind counter it. Um, so it's going to be an interesting one, to say the least. Again, I'm very surprised that Stats is looking as good as he is. It's one thing to have players come back from military service and, and act even more time than that. He had some time off in between then too. Um, and, and be able to compete in GSL, but the fact that he's here and he honestly does look better than like, um, like I think about back in IM Katowice when I saw him play against TY. I feel like he looks even better now than then. Uh, he's just been so solid. It feels like he's elevated his strategic gameplay a lot. And he's ironed out a lot of the kinks in his play, especially the defensive macro play in PBT and PBZ. And mechanically, he's also looking a lot faster than he was in the past, which makes me think that he has just been training a ton. And who knows, maybe the new GSL format where there's a week between each group stage has been to his benefit. Maybe he's actually been able to really pour himself into the preparation, and that's why he is now suddenly having this big upswing of success. But, I mean, for Hero right here on stage, I feel like most people are expecting him to emerge victorious from this one. PvP is a matchup where de defender's advantage, it usually doesn't count for very much. It's of a course, little bit flimsy. The shield battery's there. By holding. Yeah. yeah, I mean, all ends, even one base all ends can be so deadly in this matchup. I feel like this is going to be one of the fastest best of five series we could potentially get here. But who knows? Maybe Stats, the Shield of Ire, could actually hold on and roll with the punches that Hero's going to throw at him. Yeah, you know, Hero, uh, for a little bit of time, it looked like he had completely reinvented the race. He seemed to be ahead of everybody in the entire world at uh, approaching Protoss in a new way. He did fall off a little bit. Seems like he got mapped out on some level. Let's see what happens as this best of five starts now with Stats versus Hero. Okay, stats in the bottom right, Hero in the top left. We have both players make it a pylon uh, at their natural expansions. This is a map where you start out on like real high ground and then descend onto lower ground. Uh, and then there's another low ground there. So uh, they can make the gateway wall in with the cybernetics core uh, and try to block off anything there. And if you look at the match history there in the bottom right of the screen, nine to 20. Offline in favor of stats, 37 to 22 online in favor of hero. That isn't really a nerves thing. I think this is more a function of when these players were playing at their best because offline, hero and stats, a lot of these matches happened way back in the day yeah. when stats was close to his prime form. Oh, look at this brilliant artwork. Oh, first, first live, live event events. after casting for three years. Oh, they should have left it on longer. <laughs> I only got half of your side. I'm sure the rest of the message was good, though. I'm sorry. <laughs> But in terms of the uh, the online matches, Hero is one of these players that is just grinding online matches. Oh, do we have a gas steal coming in from Hero? We do. Yeah, not, not surprising to see Hero with that move there. Nah, but he, he is an online warrior, man. He's playing in pretty much every single online cup. He'll play in the ESL cups. He'll play in the Korean StarCraft League cups, which is a crowdfunded online tournament. And it's not a surprise that in the time since Stas has returned from military, where he's focused more on online matches, as we've progressed a little bit away from offline, tournaments in this stage of StarCraft II's history that Hero was such an edge. But coming in here offline, I really don't think either player is going to have that big of an advantage. And look at this also, Tasteless. Another pylon getting dropped here, just trying to disrupt the wall in a little bit. Doesn't want Stats to throw down the second gateway in that wall. You know, it's funny. They're both uh, chucking pylons down. We have one pylon planted over here from Stats and a hero side of the map to stop the Nexus from being planted. So this is a very disruptive early game on both sides. Stats lets the pylon finish. Mm-hmm. 
uh, which means now it's going to be forced labor here for Hero to try to come in and take that out. Stats has an expansion and Hero does not. And at this moment, I don't really see a lot of opportunities for damage to be dealt. We've got the Stargate tech coming up here for Hero, but I think there's plenty of time here for Stats to get ready to prepare for that. And we just got shown that he has vision of the Stargate uh, from earlier. There are some issues here for Stats, though. Because that gas got stolen, he's only just now beginning his warp gate. He's only just now throwing down the second gateway because he has that fast second nexus as oh. well. Oh, the Adept even getting in the main. I would be surprised if this shade actually finished. Just going to get some scouting information. There is Hero. It's the first Oracle in production. And Hero's going to be expanding behind this. But for stats, you can't really go full on macro. You notice he's not building probes constantly. He's not chrono boosting probes nonstop because he knows that if he invests fully into Eco, if Hero goes for one of these crazy all ins, he could just die straight up, even with a high ground advantage here on the natural expansion. His just these three gateways coming out, or these three units coming out of the gateway, the Zealot, the Adept, and the Stalker are already going to be causing some trouble here for here for stats on his side of the map. He does kill that battery off. The Shade, uh, well, there's nothing over here. He's still not going to let that complete and try to target down any probes. The Nexus is still warping in here for heroes, so there's been plenty of time for stats to soak up the resources at the natural. An Oracle is going to come into the main, and I don't believe there's anything to cover this over here. There is a Just shield a battery. battery. Oracle's going to try and slowly get one or two kills. <laughs> it takes takes a minute. It barely out damages the healing on that shield battery. So Hero should be able to at least get two, and indeed he does. Yeah, but two's not a lot. No. Um, we have a Dark Shrine being made here for Hero. Oh, wow. Is and this SOS? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I didn't expect that to be uh, in the possible decision tree uh, from Hero. It makes sense, but, though. Yeah, I mean, when you especially when you see the Citadel coming down here with Blink. Uh, a lot of times when you see the Stargate uh, there, I mean, Blink is very handy to try to get because you want to be able to catch uh, that Oracle if it comes back in there. Organically, you're almost always going to be steering the game towards Blink anyways. But the quick DTs, that could be a real issue, especially if um, uh, Stats tries to do some kind of push. Like, let's say he gets a um, War Prism and tries to come across the map with his Blink and try to hit. Um, DTs could just slip right in the main, and that might be all it takes. Just seeing Robotech alone doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have the Observers uh, A, at all, or B, if you have them, are they going to be placed in a, in a spot to catch them? And then even if they are there, are the Stalkers going to be there to get it? So the next couple of minutes are going to be very important from Stats' perspective that he is ready for this pretty sneaky mid-game move from Hero. Hero's been pretty much cutting gateway production up until this point. Wow, Going third for the base. DTs. Stats expanding now into the triangle third as three DTs warping in outside of his natural expansion. Now the first observer, about halfway done here for Stats, and I think that's going to pop right about the same time these DTs are heading into the natural expansion. So oh my God, there's even is... a stalker in the ramp, so it, it finishes as soon as the DTs get there. The tech is revealed. They Damn. instantly get recalled back, and that's... now Hero... That's wild, man. I mean, that's such a good hold there from Stats. It's funny, too, because we were kind of talking before the game started that Stats will probably have to be aggressive in some of these games and, and mix it up just because of the nature of PvP and how it operates. But looking at this, I got to say, um, Stats is absolutely playing defensively, conservatively, and making it work against Hero. Yeah, he has a pretty good lead right now. 11 Stalkers, just the three there for Hero. As Hero is going to start pivoting into charge, adding an additional gateways. And on Stats' side of thing, I, I think that for him in terms of aggression, the if he tries to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hero in chaotic early games, that's not really going to be his strength. But if Stats can defend successfully on two bases, eventually take the third with just an overall slightly better macro than Hero, and then commit to a very high-pressure attack on effectively a three-base economy, that is going to be him being able to leverage his strengths as a player into Hero's weaknesses because Hero is that kind of guy that is going to be cutting his macro a little bit to try and do damage on your side of the map. And Stats, if he's able to continue to parry attacks the way that he's been able to so far here in the beginning of game number one, he could be looking at some really powerful timings in the mid game. Okay, so the uh, hallucinated Phoenix is gonna fly through here. And I think on the way out, he should go over that fourth base. He actually might not. I don't know that Hero actually knows about that base at 6 o'clock. I think he has no idea. Yeah. I got to say, Stats is growing really quickly. Yep. 
A lot more gateways coming down for Hero now. Seven more gateways in production in total. Oh, excuse me, he's only just now starting charge for whatever reason. I thought that had begun a little bit, bit of a while ago, but yeah, that's scary actually here for Hero. With those gateways not online yet, with a very small number of stalkers on the field. Stats, if he decides to get aggressive with this group of stalkers, I'm not really sure he would be able to do too much. Now, Stats is going to try and maneuver through the middle of the map. Oh, oh the God. observer <laughs> even spots the stasis <laughs> trap. And now Hero is kind of caught out of position. He's going to go for a counterattack, it looks like, towards the third base of Stats. But Stats has so many more stalkers on his side of the map. Oh, gosh. And there's just enough zealots. This is kind of a weird interaction. I thought the stalkers for sure would at least try to hit one of the bases before they were recalled home. This causes a reset positionally on the map. Um, we have the uh, War Prism just now uh, finishing, uh, and it's just starting here for stats as well. But um, at this moment, stats is basically a couple paces ahead in development. And stats is playing a really gateway-centric style, only on three gases, so he is absolutely pumping the Zealots and the Stalkers to the maximum here, and it seems to me like he might just be gearing up for a timing attack here with plus two. War Prism is about to be finished, Plus two ground attacks is nearly done. And actually, Hero getting a bit aggressive right now. Caught out of position. He's blinking forward, in fact. So he does have his meat shield of Zealots in the very front, able to take tank some of this damage. But the overall army supply, once Hero actually moves across the map into Stasis third base, I'm not sure he's going to be able to get that much done. Yeah, he's going to try to advance on this position. The Guardian Shields are up. No Guardian Shield out right now. In fact, no, I think there's a Sentry even out right now here for Stats. But he's going to be able to hold that line. Uh, inadvertently, these Zealots that were intended to collide into the fourth base are going to catch the Templar tech here at 12 o'clock. It looks like for now, Hero can't make any advances onto that fourth. No, Hero has less army supply and one less attack upgrade. It's plus two for stats and a plus one here of Hero. So even these Zealot trades are going to go in an adv advantageous way. Oh. For stats, look at this engagement. Hero tries to dive on him, but he is underestimating the economic power of stats, who was for seven minutes able to deflect pretty much every single attack Hero threw at him seamlessly, and now he has the rewards to show for it. His economy fully online, 82 army supply to the 30 of Hero, and Stats is about to ride this one to a convincing game one win, Tasteless. Uh, just to such a dominant game. I've never really seen Hero overextend like that in PvP. It's really telling about how desperate he was in this game to make something work. I think we should be in the final moments of this. There's less stalkers for Hero and a big warp in for stats to make that lead insurmountable. Yeah, Observer even coming in to reinforce. And no DT shenanigans going to be on the cards here for Hero as Stax takes an early 1-0 lead. And that was some impeccable defense. He lost two probes to the early Oracle. His Nexus was, I want to say, like 30 or 45 seconds faster than his opponents. And he took basically no damage. He was faster on the third base. He was much faster on the fourth base. He was ahead on upgrades. He had more army supply. He was able to even stop the DT tech without even really scouting it. The Observer just came in at the perfect moment. He had a Stalker hold position in the natural ramp, too, to even solidify that defense even more. Stats is looking really good right now, man. I I'm so impressed with him. It's... It's wild. Uh, stats with quick third, e even quicker. I shouldn't say even quicker fourth. It's like he took his fourth before he took his third. <laughs> yeah. um, what I'm trying to say is like he he expanded rapidly. Um, it was an attempted pretty chaotic opening here for Hero. Stats responded really well with a very appropriate pylon block on Hero. So the Hero got slowed down more than Stats did. We're going into game number two. Let's see how this uh, series continues to develop. <laughs> Stats in the top, hero in the bottom. No? Uh, Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, um, you know, we had Pylon uh, <coughs> Gateway Wallens over at the Natural uh, in game one this time. Just It is due to the way the map is uh, configured. Right. This time they're going to be starting out in their mains here. The yeah. Gateway Wall there. I don't think we're going to see that again in this series. I'd be yeah. surprised. Site Delta's, in my opinion, the best map in the pool by, by a lot to go for that kind of expansion early on. So, oh, came, came all, all the way from, the from California. California. Yeah. Welcome. I did too. I came from California to cast That's this right. thing, man. <laughs> 12 years ago. 
Hello. From Hong Kong, welcome. Where is this? Where's Zerg? the Zerg? Well, we're gone this time. From San Francisco, glad you made it. Yeah, I was wondering, by the way, when we saw the map draft come in, because this is stats' is map selection here on Crimson Court. I have seen a couple players go for some really tricky plays because there are so many rocks on this map and so many mineral walls. What they will do is they will throw down that pylon the same way that Hero and Stats both did in the main base, and then they'll send that probe down and mine the gold minerals that are walling off from either the left or the right side of the map, and they'll sneak a probe all the way up near the opponent's main base. It proxy, you know, a Stargate or a Robo. I think we actually saw Estrella do that against Hero in an online tournament recently. And it's a really big brain play, and I was wondering if this is going to be Stats trying to throw a wrench into Hero's plan, because we were both thinking that sometime in this series he's going to have to do something quirky and aggressive. So I'm surprised it's actually not coming through here. Instead, Stats playing this about as standard as it gets, as is Hero. Stats going for a Sentry, Zealot opening. Of course, Sentry's stronger in the current iteration of the patch. I think right. Plus four damage versus shields, which is like 50, 60% more overall DPS. And that specifically only changes this matchup. Yeah. But you know, a lot of our understanding of Protoss was from the Protoss players that were really succeeding in the last, you know, three or four years. And maybe stats today is going to prove that even in this matchup, you can um, very effectively play the oh. defender's game. Okay, hold up. Hero's doing a big gateway uh, explosion here in his main with a Robo. What's important about this is that for Hero, it has to work. There's not really a plan B. Like, if you don't come in there and destroy the base or trade out and kill a lot of workers, you're probably going to lose this. Yeah, and this is very tricky by Hero, too. That Robo going down is quite late. And also, it looked to stats like this was going to be a one-gate expand coming out yeah. from Hero. There was only the one gateway in the wall, and so that's why Hero is throwing down an this additional is... fourth gateway because the production coming online is quite late. But stats went for a three-century opening. He actually canceled the Zealot. And he's going to scout this almost immediately. He sees there's no Nexus. Phoenix goes into the main base. Sees the Robo, sees the four gateways coming online. He knows exactly what Hero's about to throw at him. And the thing about Hero's build is it's not the best in terms of timing attack because there's a little bit of trickery going with this. He intentionally delayed it so that Stats wouldn't know what is coming his way. But Stats, because he went for that sentry opening, gets the scout off. And now Hero's going to be doing this timing attack later than he would if he proxied the Robo in the middle of the map, later than he would have if he didn't hide at all that he was going for Robo all in. And he really doesn't have that much to show for it. Stats is now throwing down his Robo in the main base. But Stats is going to stout out, start outpacing Hero very quickly. Yeah, so this attack's going to be inbound in a second here. Uh, he's going to send one more Hallucinated Phoenix out. Um, and it's going to be about placement. He's going to wall in the main. The force fields come down, oh. and he traps both of the Stalkers. The battery's going to give a little bit of sustain here, but not that much. The sentries, again, their damage does so much to shields here. That's a really nice pick off there for Hero getting that Stalker. He has to build a lot of momentum with this attack. If this opening salvo fired by Hero isn't able to get big damage done, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Adepts once again trying to go into the main base. Ooh, Force field sequestering off, but actually not able to really split off this army too much. And now the Adepts coming out on the right side, trying to focus on some sentries. The nice micro by Stats, though. Oh my god. And he now Hero's actually here. a little bit cut in the corner. Yeah, for a second it looked like Stats trapped too much in on that side. He might have. Uh, and so he's been forced into this corner, but I think he still might have enough. You know, it's not just about trapping something. You want to isolate a certain amount out there as well. The oh. Immortal's going to come in here now. I see just one more Stalker. And Immortal comes down now for Stats to try to match that, but Look at how many units are here right now. Yeah, Hero actually able to finesse the micro so well. Even this force field on the ramp, that immortal cannot get down. The power, the pylon's gonna go down here in the natural expansion. And Hero, he had to basically thread the needle this attack and use his micro to find some damage. And he is just barely able to do it. Hero, nice win right there, man. That was one shot that he had with that build to make yeah. it work. And his micro was good enough to pull it off. I really enjoyed that game. Um, Got to point out, you know, with, with uh, Hero coming in uh, the way that he did, Stats needed to actually fracture off a smaller amount of units. Mm -hmm. There were way too many sentries and uh, adepts that were actually on the side of, of Stats. You see, he locked it in. And he's like, oh, I got a micro back now away from these force building units I've stuck over here. It's got to be tricky. You know, the patch is still pretty fresh. And I think that some of that muscle memory and trying to identify where to create that divide and split the armies can maybe affect your decision making.
sometimes getting a sentry stuck on your side isn't as good right. as it normally would be because they do so much more damage to shields. It's tough in, uh, with the composition that Hero is going for, too, because it is a depth sentry. Those are units with pretty small hitboxes. It's hard to get the perfect force fields down to get just enough of that army that you can take a bite-sized chunk out of it and then be able to sustain the defense. In PvP, it's so cutthroat. Guys, we're tied up one-to-one. -one. Stats versus Hero. Let's go into map number three on Golden Aura. We've got stats in the top left, Hero in the bottom right. Um, you know, game two, kind of what I thought most of today would look like with these two. Um, you know, Hero doing something, you know, explosive and aggressive and executing it well enough that it's just able to take stats down. Um, we haven't really seen anything too aggressive from stats. I know we were both talking about the fact that he probably can't just play reactive uh, in the matchup. Uh, you know, right now this is we could be, you know, halfway or almost halfway through this. Oh, we're getting a shot here of these signs. All these um, pictures for the period where we didn't have GSL in the studio, we actually sent that to uh, a StarCraft museum exhibit. Oh, I didn't even know that. To. Yeah, there was a pop-up museum over here at Seoul. So they had, those were all out of there. But when I first came back to the studio for work, I was like, oh my God, they even got rid of the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what happened? Um, yeah, it was nice coming back to the studio and seeing yeah. those in the walk down to the main uh, the main audience yeah. chamber. A lot of history there. Um, so, this game, it does look like Hero could be setting up for an expand. Sometimes you put a pylon out at your uh, natural, though, to send the wrong signal to your opponent. Yeah, that pylon's going to go down there pretty much no matter what most of the time. It's either yeah. the second or the third one that will get thrown down. and. Stats now just going to patrol the natural expansion, see when that Nexus does drop, if it is going to drop at all, as Hero has been pretty aggressive so far early on in both game one and game two. And actually going to allow the Zealot to finish here. Now, PvP has been shaken up a little bit by the, the new patch sentries. They pack a lot more of a punch in this matchup than they used to. And so it's interesting seeing the way these build orders have developed. Now, Stats, even in previous GSLs, Look to have a really rock solid five gateway unit before Warp Gate was complete. Expansion build order with sentries and stalkers, which it seems like he might be going back into that one too. I think he actually showcased that build on Golden Aura a number of seasons ago. But for, Zero, for Hero to open up with a Zealot and a sentry, it just kind of shows how the power has changed a little bit right. in terms of early game units, because now getting that early Zealot, it's not too much of a loss in a situation like this one, especially if you're going up against a player like Stats, who you know is going to try and play a reactive, because these sentries, they can't really chase that Zealot down, right? And they don't want to spend two force fields. They need to save that energy for Hallucination to scout. And so this is a nice read by Hero, just going for the Zealot to get this later scout in, and also getting an early sentry out himself as a result of it. Kind of a cool little shakeup that we're seeing from the, the change of the patch, as both players will soon be Hallucinate scouting each other. Yeah, I think people didn't expect this ability to be so powerful and so useful early on just to make a, a fake Phoenix. I think the designers always imagine like, oh, well, maybe you can trick them with this. And it's like, no, you just want to get vision uh, and, and figure out what they're doing right away. Uh, we have the Forge almost finished here for Hero. Now, that tells us that he doesn't want to do anything for a little bit. Uh, with both players expanding and developing, it should be a little bit of a slow game. We got to see exactly what the tech paths are going to be, but... Uh, the fact that Hero gets a Forge that early with plus one, that'll give him um, an upgrade advantage for pretty much the rest of the game as long as he keeps up with it. Yeah, and this is one of the reasons why we were wondering whether Stats was going to throw out a couple of crazy builds, or maybe even just one crazy build early on in the first few maps, because if you let Hero just play with the mindset that he can either expand and macro very greedily, or attack very aggressively, and you're not going to be throwing any wrenches into his machine in the early game, then he can get away with kind of greedy builds like this one. He's going to have, what, maybe a 45-second upgrade advantage on plus one and on plus two if he continues the Crota Boosts on it. Or his stats, because he is a lot more defensive here in this matchup against Hero, has to play a little bit on the back foot. 
it's funny to see stats take the natural later. Uh, not by a lot, but by a little bit. And then the third earlier mm -hmm. by a couple seconds. Um, looks like he'll shut down the Phoenix before that can be scouted. But that upgrade advantage, you know, if uh, Hero decides to, he can start to warp in and really try to put some pressure on. Blink is going to be finishing almost evenly on each side. Yeah, Blink should be about the same here. The players is powering up the three bases. And Stats, I think, just taking that fast third base after scouting how early the forge was there for Hero. Is just him trying to find some other advantage that he can get back into this one. Because when you scout a forge that early there from your opponent, at least in PvP, it very rarely times up with a plus one timing attack. It's almost always something with plus two, and then later on with plus three where the big battles are going to take place. Because in PvP, if you don't do the early aggression, it can get kind of boomy when you get up to base two and base number three because you really want to flesh out your upgrades. Either you're going to be playing pure Blink Soccer, which takes quite a bit of time to build up. It's not like a Roach Max, which can happen a lot more quickly in another mirror matchup, ZBZ. Or if you want to mix in Zealots, then you have to also wait for a charge to complete. You also need to get the robo Robotics out because if your opponent goes for DTs and you don't have Observers, that can just be game ending straight away. So there's a lot of these little pieces of the puzzle you got to put together if you want to play a bit of a macro game into a later timing attack. And Stats is really leaning into that right now. He's taking not only the fast third base, but also the fast fourth base yeah. here because he knows he has a little bit of a window here before Hero can actually get that aggressive. And I love the greed we're seeing out from Stats. It's a really smart play. It's been um, uh, a game that reminds me a little bit of game one here as far as where it could end up. Now, did Stats, or sorry, Hero did take a fourth base, but it was a bit later here. We've got the robotic support bay coming down here as well. Yeah, interesting choice here by Hero going for the Robo Support Bay. <laughs> Made you blink. So now we're going to have the... <laughs> that worked on multiple work. levels. Yes, man. it did. <laughs> no wonder they pay you the big bucks. <laughs> so uh, he's going to continue to try to shut down these scouting phoenixes. I don't know that he saw the Robo Support Bay back there. Yeah, he did. Spare the cutting glimmer of it. Hopefully he clicked on it so that he knows Good fully. Oh my Lord, goodness, stats. Can you do that? Can you take five bases that fast? Is this fast? allowed? <laughs> yeah, someone get the rule book out <laughs> here. Pause it, the ref's going to come up on stage. <laughs> like, stats actually you have know, to cancel that next. It's a little I, bit too fast. I always felt like PvP was at times a bit more of a tighter matchup, but um, we're seeing a lot of growth here on both sides. And Hero's and, actually going in a Colossi of all things here, too. Yeah. So it would seem like stats, no matter what, is going to be on the receiving end again. But isn't this incredible to see stats playing the way that we're used to uh, seeing stats play, but in the modern era, you know, where it seemed like maybe this was sort of a phase in the meta and that was going to be his moment to shine the six or seven years ago. Now he's here and he's been playing just in incredibly. And I mean, right now this feels like unless there can be a real piercing attack from Hero, stats is going to develop further and further along. He's at 78 workers to the 67 of Hero. The thing is, Hero is building a much more impressive army right now because Stats is going into kind of the same macro pattern that he did in game number one. He is only sitting on three gases despite soon going up to five bases, which means that he's going to be spending all of those gas on Stalkers and on upgrades. I mean, he's even going two for it. He's getting ground weapons and ground armor. And that leaves a lot of extra minerals to just dump into Zealots. And Hero, I think, is perhaps making this adjustment either with hallucination scoutings or just basing it off of the way that Stats macroed in game number one. And is like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make Colossi because Colossi counters Zealots. And that sounds very simple. But in a situation like this one, Stats is kind of the player going for the big balloon of army supply and army value. Whereas Hero, if he can just defend, once he reaches max, he can have a really good fight here against Stats. And so that's why Stats is getting aggressive, because he's playing so mineral heavy. Now he's coming in. Blink is done, so these Stalkers can retreat back. Guardian yep. Shield popping. And now the Colossi are going to start entering the field. And with their range, they're going to be adding a lot to this army. Yeah, I don't think that Stats could stay and try to attack there anymore. It would be suicide to move in. There's a big Zealot warp in. A lot of times uh, when you have an army like what Hero has, it could be a little bit Death Ball-like. So fracturing your army into different little places and trying to hit multiple locations can be quite good. So we have one army of Zealots moving over here towards the right. I think the other um, army of Stalkers and I think Immortals and, yes, uh, Sentries is moving down towards the south. So he's going to send these Zealots in here like this. He's shift-clicked them over there. And these are going to be doing the damage. 
And he might even try to go on the Nexus. The thing is, the Colossi are so close. Daz didn't really, he wasn't successful in pulling Hero apart enough yeah. with this Death Balling army. And Daz, I think he's realized what's going on. He's taking another expansion, but he also took two more gases, threw down another robotics facility, and a Robo Bay back at home. So he's eventually going to be transitioning into Disruptors, most likely here. And I mean, the, the army split here for Hero, there isn't much stats can get, do, get done, and his army isn't going to get better either. He's at 114 supply in terms of army. He's basically maxed already. And just the force that Hero has on the ground is so much more powerful in this moment. Now, he has pulled the two Colossi away that were protecting the natural. So this is going to be a moment where Hero's going to pursue this and try to crush this position, but those Zealots are going to counterattack in here. And again, I mean, without the Colossi there, it's a real problem. A Zealot Warping is going to come, but you know, at what cost here? Both sides maxing out. It's uh, five bases, no, sorry, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six bases, excuse me, to the four. Um, if stats can hold here, he'll probably win this game, but this oh. army's looking so scary. It's a pretty good disruptor shot, but it hits a lot of high HP units, and I don't know if that's gonna be enough of a dent in the hero's army. He was just able to navigate his composition so much better than stats who focus almost purely on macro. Now, the counter damage in the fourth base of hero, it is substantial. But even with a couple of rounds of Warpens, I'm not sure Stats is going to be able to take this army down. Yes. He is chrono boosting out more Disruptors. He's trying to get them in, but he's already down one base. Hero's army is marching now into the third. More probes are going down. The next shots with Disruptors. Hero has this on his mind already, so he's able to pull back. It seems like we can get the minimap. He is stabilizing back at home. Another good Disruptor shot there for Stats, but is it going to be enough? You know, these Colossi are not good at uh, dodging the Disruptors. Uh, the probes have been wiped over at that expansion. Stat still has a, a pretty big cushion to rest on here, but the damage coming out here from Hero, it could be oh! insurmountable. That was a pretty big hit, though. It got another Immortal and a Colossus right there. If Stats can get a couple more hits like that one on this army, now that Disruptor does get defused before the shot pops. He's trying to go in for this round, but three Archons morphing on the right side. That's going to allow Hero to really absorb a lot of the impact of this army. He's going to be coming up now to this natural. Stats just has to survive this, but the complexity of Hero's army cannot be denied. He could end up taking that Robo out there in the front. He does do that. No more Disruptors. Another Disruptor falls over here to the right. Oh, but it's a really big surround of Zealots and Stalkers coming in. There isn't enough bulk in the force of Hero right now, and Stats is actually going to be able to clean this up. Now, it's a very expensive trade, but with the additional bases that he has, despite losing the third and the fourth, he might be able to power through this. And now there's more, um, well, I guess there's actually an even number of bases here, right? Because he was he lost those two at the bottom, but he can fill that in pretty quickly. It's going to take a long time for Hero to redevelop all that uh, stuff he worked so hard to get. He's going to try to rotate around to the side here. Oh. A nice play by Hero, setting the Zealots up over here towards his top right base. Completely undefended. A big Zealot warp in here to try to counter it. But he gets oh. the pylon! Oh. The pylon goes down, and the probes are completely defenseless. And Stats is basically relegated to a three-base economy right now. He has to get something done because Hero powering back at home is looking really scary. Stalkers moving forward are able to one-shot that Disruptor. Two more Colossi enter the field. Army Supply is almost dead even right now, but... And kind of a twist of fates. Hero is the player with a better economy right now on four bases. He's at 65 workers to the 54 of Stats because he was able to get so much damage done with that death volley push at the third and the fourth of Stats. Okay, so, I mean, this has become such an odd game. Oh, no! Oh, Stats. my God, he's eating so many shots there. He doesn't blink on top of it. I think he might have just thought there was going to be more support for the Colossi, so he ran through. But now Hero's been able to muster up enough army on the ground to support these Colossi. Yeah. That Stats is going to have a very hard time defending this with just Stalkers and Zealots. He's going for the perfect arc. Stalkers are going to blink in. They're able to one-shot one of the Colossi. Oh, they get the Warpers oh on two. God. The second Colossus goes down. A very good trade there for Stats, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. I mean, the economy here for Hero is just so substantial. Oh, even the Disruptor coming in. Unfortunately, it's on a move command. <laughs> That's crazy. I thought Hero was about to win that game. Now uh, it seems like Stats is barely hanging on. Oh, but the sandwich with the Zelts coming on the left side could be huge here for Hero. Stats, yeah. he's using these blinks really conservatively. Now there isn't a lot left in the tank. Hero, is he going to blink forward on these Stalkers and get them out of this game? That pylon's going to go down. And man, in a back and forth game, you can see Stats take his hands off the keyboard. He types out GG. That was a really wow. fun game. It was so cool to see how differently each side played. You know, Stats uh, kind of almost like a Zerg. 
is that he's just growing. He's got these basic units. He's trying to play a positional game to keep uh, Hero oppressed. You know, Hero with a stronger army, but at the same time, it's not as nimble. It's not as mobile. And so the result is that Hero has a, a pretty difficult decision where he has to both push and barely defend the few bases he has, but he did enough damage. And from there, he was able to um, reposition himself. He got two more Colossi out. And during that initial push, the hero kind of moved across the map with it, knowing he had to get something done. He took out the Robos. So more disruptors couldn't be added in. I mean, imagine that Stats just had the Robo in his main. Could have been a different game. Hero navigating his army composition perfectly there in set number three. Able to take this to match point now against the Palindrome Protoss himself, Stats. <laughs> His name's the same forward as it is backwards, Tasteless, but I don't know if that's going to help him here in set number four. Let's see if Hero can win one more game and go to the finals or if we're going to a game number five. <laughs> Any moment Any now. Second. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, stats in the top left, hero in the bottom right. It's tough to time those transitions sometimes, man. Oh it's yeah. It's tricky. You've got you've got like 10 years experience. Well, no, I just, on you got to listen to Caster Park and basically guess uh, when he's going to he's going to end it. Yeah, I, I look at the monitors, I'm like, okay, the game the game is 75% loaded in. Let's let's do this thing. And then it's like, wait. They got more to say. So, um, <laughs> that last game was a real treat. I really enjoyed seeing the different play styles there. It is cool to see stats do that macro control play uh, and see how different a mirror matchup can look. Uh, flew in from Romania to watch stats lift the trophy. Well, he might still make it. <laughs> All the way from California. So many sad Zerg players here in the audience. I love those little stats. Yeah, stickers. those are, I think, his, uh, is that his Twitch emoji? Yeah, I, think it's, I think it's one of his emotes, yeah, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. It's a good one. So. Uh, mirror builds, by the way, this time. Mm -hmm. Two gates with a later core. No stats. If he tries to play the same style here on Oceanborn as opposed to on Golden Aura, I, I feel like it, he has a much better chance of making it work, even against the composition that Hero ran. Because yeah. on, on this map, as opposed to the previous one, it's a lot harder to actually defend four bases. You get the third relatively e easily there in the triangle, but after that, when you have to expand quite far down into the six o'clock position or into the three o'clock position here from Hero's perspective. You're on the low ground and you can really get pulled apart by multi-prong attacks. The same way that stats try to do with one group of stalkers and mortals and one group of zealots. So I wonder if he's gonna go back to this relatively low gas, like three assimilator style with rapid expansions that we saw him do in game number one that we saw him do in game number three. Well, here again on Oceanborn. We've got a proxy robo here. Uh, in the upper middle of the map. Oh, and we actually have stats Hero. going for a robo in his main base as well. No expansion. So uh, usually the guy with the robo in his base is a little bit safer, but it depends on how ready they are for an attack. It can kind of go both ways, though, because unless you're able to meet them in your natural expansion, which isn't always the case, then suddenly you're at risk of not being able to defend the two gateways of your natural expansion, the ones on the ramp, and then you have to rebuild those. Suddenly you have idle production time, 300 more minerals, you have to wait for those gateways to come back online. I mean, Farmy is one of these players that is notorious on the Korean ladder for only doing proxy robo and PVP, and he beats yeah. top players all the time. I think against me, I'm not a top player, but he has like a 90% win rate. <laughs> it is so hard to hold, even when you know it's coming, and even if you go for the in-base robo. So seeing stats go for that in-base robo like this doesn't necessarily tell you that he's gonna be able to hold on and defend Especially if this Stalker gets caught here. Stats needs to pull this back immediately. Yes, he does. Only going to take a little bit of damage. In fact, no hull damage at all. Yeah, no hull. But the oh, Immortal's going to come out. Spoke too soon. That Immortal, and oh my goodness. So much damage getting done. And, uh, and Adept's going to come in here just in case he couldn't get that last shot. He's going to try to body block. Oh, it's a disaster right now for Stats. And Hero is on the move. And we have a War Prism that was made first. So the War Prism doesn't really... Certainly doesn't give you any ammunition in the fight. Yeah, and a little bit of indecision there from Stats, too. He was attacking the shield battery at his natural exp at his main ramp because he thought he wanted to have a pathway down into his natural, but now he's like, wait, I actually need to hold on to this thing. 
And with Hero warping in a couple additional sentries, he's going to have three or four force fields here once he starts off this attack. It is going to be so hard for stats, even with a warp prism, oh. to fully defend these gateways. I feel like the best you can almost do is buy time, but let's see how the micro goes. Again, with a warp prism, it's really hard to get actual kills on these units when you have this wall in between these two armies because the war prism just lifts up whatever units gets isolated and not much happens at this top level. But, you know, the gateways are pretty nice targets to try to hit here. Mm -hmm. And taking the gateways out obviously stops the uh, production. That's one of the reasons why sometimes going for the robo in the main and being on the defender's advantage actually makes you disadvantaged. He's going to send these this push. adepts in. Is he going to let them unshade? Oh, he's he going to let them finish. Oh, surprised he's actually not pouncing on that army there, the natural ramp. Instead, just going to go for probes. And again, in a low economy situation like this one, where you basically only probe up into the main base. Oh, I love this micro here by Stas, trying to mitigate the damage as best he can. Lifts up some probes to dodge shots from the adepts. But now his natural ramp is completely opened up. That force field going to isolate two units, but they only lose their shields. And now it's 18 workers at 22. Both players on one base. Which means it's going to be tough for stats to, you know, both get workers. Oh my god, hero. Dude, that was such a good uh, Phoenix scout. What a smart read. Yeah. And now Hero's going into a Twilight Council because he, he recognizes that he's far enough ahead. He killed five or six workers near the main base of Stats. Stats has to rebuild those. Until they get back online, his economy is just going to be way worse. There's nothing really that can test these Immortals. I mean, he can just get this pylon and micro back. <laughs> There's nothing that can deny it, really. The stalker count is so low. Stats is doing the same thing over here, going to try and disable this Robo. He gets out. Oh, oh boy. Oh my god, that but that could be it. Yeah, that, this is deadly. Yeah. He doesn't even have the two immortals over here with this to try to Okay, he's gonna bring that in now, which means the other warpers is gonna have to go back. And yeah, the immortals get recalled back. But I mean, again, Stats has lost so much money, even just rebuilding all this infrastructure in the front. He's lost pylons, shield batteries, gateways. And now Hero is going into Glaive Adepts as the upgrade. I love this tech choice coming in. Because nothing that Hero, or nothing that Stats is making really can actually hold a candle to Mass Adept in this situation. Yeah. There isn't really much, especially with four Immortals on the ground right now for Hero. He's getting another gateway here too. He's gonna come in and just confirm what's going on in the main, try to get a count uh, on the Immortals and everything else. Another Shade's gonna come. And eventually when that Glaive's upgrade is done, he will Shade in. He will commit to this. I think he's gonna Shade right on the army once that Glaive's upgrade is finished. I think so. I mean, these, these Immortals are able to get so much. The thing is, I mean, you can't really answer it here as stats. Like, that happens, and then Hero was able to work his way up your ramp, and once again, we're going to have another engagement. This is even before Claves is done. Yeah. Hero feeling very confident coming in to take this fight. Immortal's going to drop right here on the ramp, picking up the low HP Immortal, and I think Hero is about to yep. book his ticket to the grand finals here at GSL. I got to say, a beautiful game here from Hero. Every decision was so smart. I love him attacking that pylon over and over again just to slow down growth out of that robo. There's no way that stats can recover. We're going to have Hero in the finals here. GG! The story ends for stats in this Code S, but it was a terrific one. And now Hero is going to be holding the torch for Protoss players around the world, facing off against either Maru or Cure in the finals later on tonight. And that was a convincing win. I think Hero just really flexing his muscles as a micro god in PvP. Yeah. Well, I mean, Hero won on his own terms. I think that, you know, this is a matchup that I think Stats' is style, it's, it's gonna have a hard time um, working uh, with, you know, Hero is so good at controlling the game. I think the decision to make the proxy robo was a smart move. I think he knew the ins and outs on exactly how to come in there and punish Stats. Stats did his best to defend, and I think Stats showed a really great late game PvP in game one. But at the end of the day, Hero just has, I think, a better grasp on the matchup, sees the strengths of Protoss, as well as the weaknesses, and plays accordingly. I mean, he executed those early game attacks so well, particularly there in game number four. I mean, that immortal attack was just perfection. I mean, it's scary when you see a, like a, a mid-tier GM do it, but when you see Hero do it with his control, I mean, the War Prison Micro was completely flawless. He got so much value out of his early game units. It, it all just compounded from the moment stats moved across the map and those stalkers getting caught by the gateway units outside Hero's natural, the immortal reinforcing in, the adept that was shaded all the way to stats' base. And uh, this former GSL champion is going to have another shot at the trophy. 
We'll see if he smiles again. Guys, right. we're going to go to a short break. When we get back, the next semifinal match between Cure versus Mario. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you soon.